with the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, God said, I will restore to you. Somebody say restoration. Oh, come on. Somebody say restoration. Let us pray. Father, we worship you. We magnify your name, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God, because you have been faithful. We worship you, O oh God, because you are our rock. You are our fortress. You are our refuge. You are the, the, the shelter in time of storm. And we praise you now, O oh God, that you will restore to us that which was taken. We praise your name, O oh God, because you are the great restorer. You are the one, O oh God, that does things well. The song says, for I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. And so, God, we have no need to fear except, God, we forget who has led us in the past. It was the hand of God. That's why the songwriter says, I must have the Savior with me. For I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me. And his arms around me must be thrown. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Oh, Father, we will not fear today because, God, you go before us. We will not fear today, God, because you go before us. And if God is for us this morning, who can be against us? If God fights our battles, oh God, then we stand victorious. Because no weapon that is formed against the children of God can prosper. And every tongue that arises against us, oh God, this morning we have the confidence that it will be condemned. Oh God, we pray that this morning because you are Jehovah. We praise you this morning because you're great. We praise you this morning because you are a healer. We praise you this morning because, God, you are the great physician. Oh, God, you said in your word that you wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health. Oh, God, you said many are the afflictions of the righteous. But you told us not to fear because, God, you said you will deliver us out of them all. Oh, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every sickness. We plead the blood of Jesus over every generational curse. We plead the blood of Jesus uh, over every cancer spirit, every fibroid spirit. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over every hypertensive spirit. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over sicknesses and diseases. Uh, oh God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every foreign thing uh, that has entered into our bodies. Uh, and we release our bodies to be healthy. Uh, we release our bodies to be healthy. Uh, we release our minds to be healthy. Uh, we release our hands to praise the Lord. Uh, Oh, Father, you are worthy this morning, worthy to receive the honor, worthy to receive the glory, worthy to be our uh, mighty God, to be exalted. Uh, there is none like you in all the earth. You are the first and you are the last. You are the alpha and you are the omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. You are the author and you are the finisher. You are redeemer. You are creator. You are defender. You are a provider. You are a protector. You are a healer. You are a sustainer. Do I have anybody in this room that can magnify the name of the Lord with me? Oh, magnify the name of the Lord. For today I decree in the Almighty God, I decree today that the Lord shall do great things. 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 Do great things. I don't know what you're believing the Lord for, but the word came this morning that says, God says, I shall do great things. Oh, Father, some trust in chariots this morning and some trust in horses. But today, mighty God, we stand up in this house and we declare that we will trust in the name of the Lord. We will trust in the name of the Lord. We will trust in the name of the Lord. We will trust in the name of the Lord. The sickness is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that he is the Lord. So, Father, rule this morning and overrule. We set the atmosphere for you to do mighty things, oh God. Everything that has been sent, oh God, to tie up worship. This morning we plead the blood of Jesus against it. Oh Father, we decree that as we open our mouth, everything, every assignment, every infirmity, every plan of the enemy will be weakened at the sound of our praise. I would that somebody would dare themselves to open up your mouth in this room and begin to release the highest praise. Somebody release the highest praise in this room. Somebody go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Our praise shall do it this morning. We magnify the Lord. We magnify the Lord. Hosanna is his name. The song says, Lord, we lift up your name. With a heart filled with praise, we exalt thee, O Lord, on high. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Come on, sing it. She Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Oh, you are the most 
this room for he alone is worthy for he sister Abby he alone is worthy Somebody go ahead and bless him. Somebody go ahead and praise his name. Open up your mouth and give him the highest praise. Somebody go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Don't look to your right or to your left. Just look at the majesty of God. Isaiah saw him high and lifted up. Isaiah said, angel who worshiped him. Do I have anybody in this building that just want to love on God? That just want to worship his name? Just open up your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. I will bless the name of the Lord at all times. And his praises shall forever be in my mouth. Do I have a worshiper in this room? Do I have a worshiper in this room? To begin to pour oil on Jesus. To begin to magnify his name. To begin to worship him. To begin to bless his name. Do I have anybody that's ready to touch God with your worship? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, go ahead and bless him. Bless the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody open your mouth in this room and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 of kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah to the great I am that I am. Hallelujah. We serve an amazing God. I said we serve an amazing God. I said we serve an amazing God. Do I have anybody in this room that can testify that he is amazing? Oh, y'all quiet in this room. I, I said, do I have any believer in this room that can testify that God is amazing? He is God. He is God. In the good times and the bad, he is God. Mm, he's God. You are God alone. From before time began. You are on your throne. I don't know who this is for. But he is God alone. And right now, woo, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. <laughs> you are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. Ah, you are God. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. Woo. You are God alone. The old folks said, God is still on the throne. Woo. And he will remember his own. Though trials may press us, 
and burdens distresses listen he never will leave you alone oh god is still on the throne and he will remember his own his promise is true he will not forget you i feel you god i feel you god i feel you saying something god is still on hey! the throne i feel you god i hear you god i hear you i hear you god i hear you god i hear you god god is still on the throne and he will remember his own though trials may press you and the burdens distress you i hear god saying i will never 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 leave you i feel god i feel you god i feel god is still on i don't know who this is for but i hear god speaking oh and i will remember my own i hear god saying my promise is true i will never forget you i hear god this morning saying i am still on hey, the throne i hear you this morning holy ghost god said i am still on the throne and i will remember my own i don't know what the report may have been i don't know what news you may have gotten this week but I hear the voice of the Holy Ghost saying, though trials may press you, eh, and though burdens may stress you, God saying, I will never leave you alone. I am still on the throne. I will remember my own. Ah. God says, my promise is true. I will never forget you. For I am <laughs> still on the be still and know. I hear God this morning that I am God be seen and know look at your name as a neighbor be still be still command my mind to be still be still be still be still be still There is a visitation happening right now. I hear the Holy Spirit saying there is a visitation happening right here, right now in this room. I hear the voice of the Holy Ghost saying 
There is a passing through happening. Oh my, my, right now in this room, there is a shifting that is, musicians, help me, help me, that is taking place in this room. I don't know what you're believing the Lord for, but I want everybody who can open up your mouth and begin to tap into this atmosphere. I don't know what you're believing the Lord for, but I hear the voice of the Lord saying, there is a visit, oh my God, there is a visitation taking place right here, right now. Somebody begin to tap in. Oh, my. oh, come on, come on, musicians. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Move, Holy Ghost. Move by your power. Move by your strength. Move by your authority. Oh, Father, release yourself in this room. Oh, God, do it, God. Do it for my sister. Do it for my brother. I don't know what they're believing the Lord for this morning, but we decree healing. We decree healing. Somebody shout healing. Somebody shout healing. Somebody shout healing. Somebody! I'm about to hand over to the man of God. Sister Abby, there's a woman in the Bible, and for 12 years, she kept on going through the same thing. And she went from doctor to doctor, trying to find a solution. But one day she came to a church. One day she heard that there was a visitation, my God, taking place at a specific location. And she said, if I just, if I just touch the hem, I don't need to see Jesus' face. I don't need to see his hands. All I gotta do is touch the hem. Do I have five people in this room that just want to touch the hem? Watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible tells us, Brother Cole, the Bible tells us that they were pressing on Jesus. Everybody was pressing on him because everybody wanted to touch him. And they were pulling him and touching him. But when this woman touched him, he turned around and said, somebody, somebody, somebody touched me. And the disciples said, I don't understand Jesus. Are you losing your mind? Because so many people are touching you. So many people are reaching after you. So many people are pulling you. And you still ask, somebody touched me. God said, it was a different touch. It was a different pull. It was a different kind of touch because I feel like something leave my body. I feel like virtue leave my body. And the Bible tells us that the flow, the issue that she had was immediately dried up. Now watch this. Every time I read this passage of scripture, I ask God one simple question. God, am I touching you or am I touching you? Am I touching you in the physical or am I touching you by faith? Or oh, y'all missed that. And the reason I mentioned it right now is that the Lord said there is a visitation happening right now. And I don't know what you, Almighty God, I don't know what you're believing the Lord for. But the Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, the Lord said, my hem is still available. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. I need about five people in this room that want to touch the hem. Just lift your hands. I need about five people in this room that need to touch the hem. Oh, come on, you're playing games. You're playing games. 
you're playing games. If you really want God to move, the Lord said there is a visitation happening right now. I don't know if you're believing the Lord for healing. I don't know if you're believing the Lord for a breakthrough. But do I have anybody in this room that can open up your mouth and begin to press, press through that crowd and touch it? Oh, come on, come on, somebody praise him. Miracles, miracles, breakthrough, deliverance, breakthrough, deliverance. There is an open heaven. There is an open heaven. There is an open heaven. I see healing. I see deliverance. I see breakthrough. I see children coming back. I see wives coming back. I see husbands coming back. There is a visitation. Lift your hands in this room, everybody. Woo, my God. Everybody in this house, stand to your feet if you're able to. Everybody stand to your feet if you're able to and lift your hands to... Ah! Lift your hands towards... Ah, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, my, 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 my. I feel God. I feel him. I feel God. I feel him. Oh, mighty God. I hear your call. Visitation, 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 visitation. I hear your call. I hear your call. I hear your call. Oh. Oh, somebody shout, even me. Somebody shout, even me, God. Even me, God. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. I need healing. I need a way maker. I need a provider. I need a defender. Oh, God, show up. Show up in my health. Turn things around. Show up in my mind. Turn things around. Show up in my family. Turn things. According to the measure of your faith, shall ye be blessed. Ah. If you're experiencing anything right now, the Holy Spirit said there's a visitation. I don't know what word the man of God has for you, but I hear clearly the Holy Spirit said there is. Ah, mighty God, there is a move. I see mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. I see angels, Sister Alyssa. I see angels. I see angels. I see angels. I see angels who excel in strength and power. I need about five people in this room. I need about five people in this room to help me tell.
Oh my God. I hear God saying, every arrow that has been sent towards you, towards your household, towards your health, God said, I have come to turn back that arrow into the bosom of the sender. I hear God saying, every weapon that has been formed against your mind, against your family, against your ministry, against your finances, God said, I have come to turn it around. Everything that is working against your mind, working against your children, working against your destiny, God said, I have come to turn it around. Every opia, every witchcraft, every necromancy, every demonic force out of the kingdom of hell, I hear God saying, I have come to turn it around. Somebody shall turn it around. Turn it. Somebody shall visitation. Somebody shall visitation. Somebody. My, 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 oh, do it, God, do it, God, do it, Lord, do it, God, turn it around, God, do it, oh, Father, let your power fall, when your name is called, prove the doubters wrong. You're still mighty and strong. Visitation, visitation. Find this better for me. Find this better for me. And I'm my own belief. So I can tell my friends. You have won. You have won. You have won. Again, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Ma, 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 mighty warrior, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah, Jehovah is your name. Mighty, mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. We give you worship. We give you praise, God. We magnify the name of the Lord. We glorify the name of Jehovah. Open up your mouth in this room and begin to exalt the name of God. Begin to praise the name of your God. Your God has descended. God said, I have descended to turn it around. God said, I have descended to turn it around.
your head so we gaze and be lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory who is the king of glory who is the king of glory he is the lord almighty god the lord strong and mighty the lord who is the mighty in battle lift up your head so we gaze and be lifted up he everlasting door watch god watch god watch god watch god It was the sound that was coming out of Jehoshaphat's army. It was the sound that was coming out of uh, the men that was worshipping and the men that was singing and the men that was marching. It was the sound that was coming out uh, uh, that confuses uh, the enemies, that defeated the enemies, that uh, uh, turned the enemies and each other and caused them to fight and defeat uh, and destroy one another. So as there is a sound in this house today and as there, there is a noise in this house and a praise in this house uh, and a shout in this house and a holler in this house uh, there, there are some enemies that have been confused uh, there are some situations that have been confused even right now uh, there are some demons and devils that have been confused by and through our worship uh, by and through our praises and by and through our thanksgiving uh, our exaltation and our adoration uh, uh, while Minister Odin was, uh, was, was talking about the woman uh, with the issue of blood uh, I hear the spirit say to tell somebody that your 12 years is over your 12 years is over your 12 years I, I hear the spirit uh, uh, speaking my my ears loud and clear and say to tell somebody that your 12 years is over uh, your 12 years is over go ahead and rejoice because your 12 years is over go ahead and praise your God because your 12 years is over go ahead and magnify him because your 12 your 12 your 12 your 12 your 12 
12, you're 12. Oh, shout hallelujah. Oh, that somebody would open the mouth and shout, my 12 is over. My 12, my 12 is over. My 12 years, I'm free, I'm free. My 12 years is over. I am delivered from my 12. I am free from my 12. I am liberated from my 12. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for freeing me from my 12 years. Thank you for delivering me from my 12 years. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And what is so amazing about that story uh, is that Jesus was talking about the touch of the woman. Uh, Jesus was talking about the touch of the woman. Ah, uh, but the woman was not talking about her touch. Uh, the woman was talking about the touch of Jesus, the touch of Jesus. Uh, and I realize, I realize that we can come close enough. Uh, I realize that we can increase our faith enough uh, to touch him, we will live here today talking about his touch I said we will leave here today oh talking about his touch the woman did not leave talking about her touch but she left talking about the touch of Jesus Jesus was talking about her touch but she was talking about the touch of Jesus oh that somebody would give him a praise today for ending for ending for ending the Bible calls it a cycle a cycle a cycle a cycle that plagued the woman for 12 years but finally her cycle was over her cycle was over oh glory to God and she returned she returned she returned to normal life she returned to normal function oh that somebody today it's a day that we have set aside to fast it's a day that we have set aside to pray and the power of faith ministries under the leadership of Apostle Bishop Dr. Delford Davis has summoned us and has called us into fasting and prayer today from 7 a.m. this morning until 6 o'clock this evening we have been summoned and called into prayer oh that we should fast and we should pray that God and we are functioning under the theme of free thy people oh God God, free thy people. Uh, free thy people, oh God. Oh, that thy people may return uh, to normal functions, may return uh, to normal living, may return uh, oh, to the place uh, where we once were. The woman uh, was returned to normal functions. Uh, she was returned to normal living. Uh, and today we are praying and we are asking God. Uh, to free us, free us so that we can return to normal living, normal living. If you are sick and tired of masks, if you are sick and tired of coronavirus and Delta virus, well, today we are taking all the necessary steps and measures to correct whatever problems may be there that has caused this great pandemic to come upon us. We are taking steps today and we are believing the Lord that after today he's going to free us and return us. Glory to God to normal functions. We truly want to thank Minister Odain and the praise team for leading us into such awesome, awesome praise and worship today. Taking us into the realms, into the inner court, into the secret place, and into the dwelling place. We magnify the name of the Lord and we give him glory today for that which he has done and continue to do. Amen. Let me welcome each and everyone to the house. Special greetings uh, to the visitors and special welcome uh, to one and all those on social media and radio land. Welcome, welcome to each and everyone. Uh, today 
We are functioning, we are functioning <laughs> under the theme free thy people, O oh Lord. <laughs> uh, in the month of September, it is the prophetic door, the prophetic door. <laughs> oh, the prophetic door for the month of September. <laughs> and we truly give God thanks for this, <laughs> for this glorious day, this amazing day, <laughs> this wonderful day that he has given unto us <laughs> when churches and people everywhere <laughs> Uh, today we are crying out, we are reaching out, uh, and we are looking up to the God uh, who is in the hills. Uh, from whence come it? Uh, from whence come it? From whence come it? Uh, our help, our help, uh, come it from the Lord, uh, which made the heavens and the earth. Uh, the woman left his present with a song. Uh, she left with a song. She left singing. He touched me. Uh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. Uh, and all oh, the joy. The joy, the joy, the joy. Oh, that flood my soul. The woman left saying something, something, Sister Abigail. She left saying something, something. Uh, something happened. Uh, something happened 12 years ago. Oh, but something happened today. That undo that which has happened 12 years ago. Oh, something happened today. And I'm back to normal functions. Oh, something happened today. Today and oh, I am made whole. Oh, something happened, and I get back my hallelujah. I get back my shout. I get back my praise. I get back my song. I get back my worship. I get back my walk. I get back my freedom. Oh, something happened, and oh, the joy that Kalabo Shaba the flood my soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the something. I worship you for the something. I magnify you. I glorify you for the something. Oh, glory to God, but there is something about fasting. There is something about prayer. There is something about worship. There is something about praises. There is something about thanksgiving. And there is something about us coming together. No wonder the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 10 that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Together, as a manner of some is, I guess coronavirus knows the power of assembling. That when we assemble together, what can happen and what will happen? I guess that's the reason why Corona is fighting us so hard that we should not assemble together. Oh, glory to God. God knew that online was coming, Minister Odin. God knew long time ago that online was coming. And when God put that verse in the Bible to say that we should not forget the assembling of ourselves together, God was saying we should not replace assembling together with online. That online should have its place. And online should have its time. And online should have its day. But assembling together should also have its time and his day. So he said we should not forget that and replace Place it with online. So coronavirus. Coronavirus has threatened us. And coronavirus is determined uh, to push us away from assembling together uh, and to push us uh, to online. Uh, but today, today we are breaking the back. We are breaking the back. We are breaking the back. Uh, we are breaking the back of coronavirus and Delta virus uh, and all kinds of viruses today. Uh, we are supplicating and we are interceding and we are reaching out uh, and we are crying out and we are praying uh, and to our Father that he will break the back and return us to normal, normal, normal functions. The woman body, the woman body was regulated. Her functions was regulated. <laughs> 
her flow was regulated. Everything returned to normal. And today we are praying for regulation. Oh, that somebody would help me. Oh, that somebody would help me pray today. Oh, that somebody would enter in with me. That somebody would cry out with me for regulation, regulation, regulation. Oh, glory to God. A regulation that will return and put things back in order. Oh, regulation in the realms of the spirit. Regulation in the Holy Ghost. Regulation in the anointing. Regulation in the house of God. By and through the power of the Holy Ghost. By and through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Is a theme, the theme scripture for the a day of saturation. Yes, it is known and called the day of a saturation. And the reason why it is called the day of saturation, it is because we are saturating the elements and the atmosphere. We are saturating the heavens and the earth with worship, with fasting and with prayer, with repentance and apologies, with turning and surrendering. We are saturating. We are looking for some people today who will open up their mouth and help us to saturate. Oh, glory to God, oh, to saturate, uh, to fill up and to wet up, uh, and to take charge and to take control over the elements is so saturated with prayer, with worship, with praises and thanksgiving that the coronavirus will lose its power to manifest and to function and to operate because the place is too saturated for Corona to function. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we welcome you to the day of saturation. Amen. So many speakers today from all over on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, television, all over. I happen to be one of those speakers. Amen. Today, who is in that lineup? Amen. And I give God thanks. Amen. We were asked to bring a word and we were asked to pray. And I thank God today. I have listened to many, many uh, during the course of the morning. Uh, amen. Who have uh, uh, prayed and encouraged uh, the people of God. And we will continue. We will continue. Joel chapter 2, reading at the 12th verse. The 12th verse. Uh, the 12th verse and following. Uh, uh, try to avoid all distractions. Uh, try to, dis the, to, to avoid uh, uh, everything else and stay focused. Focus right now huh, upon uh, the word and the house. Uh, Joel chapter 2, reading at the 12th verse and following. Uh, Therefore also now thou saith the Lord, turn he to me with all your heart, uh, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, uh, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. Uh, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, uh, and repented him uh, of evil. Uh, who know it if he will, if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. It. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spear thy people, O Lord. 
and give not uh, thy heritage to a reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and he shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove, I will remove far far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hidden part toward the uttermost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do, will do great things. The Lord will do great things. Father, we thank you for today, and we thank you for your words. And we thank you that they are yea and amen. And we thank you for the mighty weapons that thou hast given unto us, O God. Uh, weapons that are not carnal, but weapons that are mighty. Uh, mighty through your son, in pulling down our strongholds and casting down of evil imaginations and bring into captivities everything that exalted every high thing every principalities and powers thing every rulers of darkness thing every spiritual wickedness thing every witchcraft thing every black magic thing every voodoo thing oh god every coronavirus thing every delta virus thing every sickness thing every disease thing oh god every temptation thing everything that oppress and depress and suppress and frustrate and confuse. Oh God, everything that come to destroy. We lift up prayers and we lift up worship and we lift up praises and we lift up thanksgiving and we attack and rebuke and charge and curse and blood up and confound and defeat and destroy the bonds of wickedness, the works of evil, the works of darkness and the gates of hell. Father, today we sanctify and the we sanctify our fast. We sanctify ourselves. We consecrate ourselves. We purge ourselves through your words. We ask of you, God, that through your words, for it is your word that cleanse it. It is your word that sanctify it. It is your word that save it. It is your word that deliver it. So we ask of thee today, by and through the anointing and by and through the power of the Holy Ghost, you will sanctify us. Oh God, you will wash us. We repent for our sins and our iniquity, our unrighteousness and our ungodliness, our filthiness and our evil, our wickedness and our wicked ways. We repent and apologize and ask of thee today, oh God, that you will turn and have mercy. You will turn and forgive. You will turn and spear. You will turn and restore. You will turn and return us. Oh God, to normal functions. Return us to your presence. Return us to the anointing. Return us to the power of the resurrection. I will lift up prayers and pray. And we fast and supplicate. And intercede and open wildfire. And blood of demons and devils. And blood of principalities and powers. And push back on every network. Every army, every operation. Every throne, every dominion and kingdoms. And regions and territories. Oh mighty God, mighty God. We lift up prayers today. We lift up prayers at the cross. We lift up prayers in the earth. We lift up prayers in the elements. We lift up prayers in the firmament. We lift up prayers unto your name. We lift up prayers unto the heavens. We pray our way, God. We pray our way into sanctification. We pray our way into purification. We pray our way into consecration. We pray our way into freedom. We pray our way into revival. We pray our way, O oh God, into an open heaven, a heavens of favor, a heavens of goodness, a heavens of mercy, a heavens of deliverance, a heavens of increase, a heavens, O oh mighty God, a divine outpouring, divine manifestation, a divinely 
liberation a heaven oh God under which souls will be saved lives will be changed burdens will be lifted strongholds will be pulled down demons and devils will back up and back up and back out and flee and take their flight I release your holy angels with flame and sword of fire oh God to be engaged in battle in spiritual warfare a fighting of demons and devils a defeating and destroying the armies of the alien the network of the wicked almighty God of Daniel oh we have no might nor power against this great virus that we are up against but our eyes are up on the air God our cry is on our look is on to thee we pray God you will lose the bonds and lose the chains and the shackles and satan abu shakun the rabandi katia el abu and saturate your people almighty God saturate the heavens and the earth the elements and the firmament to oh God Father, we pray. We pray and say today, God, spare thy people. Spare thy people. Spare thy inheritance. Spare our nations. We pray today, God, and supplicate and intercede and beseech and ask of thee, O God. Many today are laid up in the hospital beds. Many on the respirator, ventilators. O God, many today, O God, are battling for their lives and they are not saved. Oh, but we pray, God, you will spare your people. You will come down and have mercy. O God, you will turn the hearts of men to repentance and to apologies. Oh God, you will defeat the kingdom of darkness, the bonds of wickedness and the gates of hell. Are those who accept employment, who work with Satan and to work for Satan, are to burn the house and to create havoc. We push back and blood back and attack back and charge back and curse back and cripple back and confound back and defeat back and destroy back. God, we defend the house. We cover the house. We pray for the house. Oh God, that hey God, and nothing that has been released out of the magical kingdom of darkness will swallow us. Oh God, will swallow our family, will swallow our house, will swallow our ministry, our jobs, our businesses, our finances, our inheritance. We blood up every swallowing demon. We curse every swallowing demon. We open wide fire upon every swallow swallowing demon with charge and rebuke every swallowing demon oh altar that had been set up had to swallow blessing a swallow deliverance and victory to swallow ministry we open wild fire upon you today we burn your images and your statues your pestilence and your plague your demons and your devils your black magic and your witch your Bodo and your Obia, your witches and your goddess, your wizard and your warlock, your taskmasters and your slave masters, your evil intelligence, your embargoes and your sanctions, and your seed reopen with fire today. Father, 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 we pray in the realms. We pray in the realms. We pray in the supernatural. We pray in the heavens. We pray in the earth, oh God. And we pray that you will revive thy people. For thou art the very God who promised that in the midst of the year you will revive your people. Father, we are praying and we are fasting. And we are asking of thee to revive us out of coronavirus. Revive us out of Delta virus. Revive us out of struggles and hardship. Revive us out of oppression and depression. Revive us out of the hand of slave masters and taskmasters. Rabakalem. 
Bible shall revive us out of the house of bondage. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Hey, mighty God of Daniel, we pray that you will revive us and free your people, oh God. Set us free, oh God, that we'll be free to worship you. Be free to enter into your gate with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We'll be free to be thankful unto thee, O oh Lord, and to bless your name, for you are good, you are good, and you are good all the time. Father, hear our cry, hear our petitions, our intercessions, and our supplications. Oh God, make haste, make haste to deliver. Make haste to heal. Make haste to recover. Make haste to restore God. Make haste to give victory. We charge and attack every assignment of sickness and disease upon your people. We blood up every principle. Every principalities and powers. We open wildfire in the elements and the firmament upon the prince of Persia and the kings of Greece network and operation our thrones and dominion regions and territories blood, sword and fire be released oh mighty God yeah. upon the armies of the aliens when the bonds of wickedness, when the rulers of darkness, upon the gates of hell, upon every demonstrators and protesters, opposers and sabotagers and underminders, upon our demisers, we release wildfire in the name of Jesus, mighty God, mighty God. Every spirit of conspiracy, we open fire and charge and rebuke today, mighty God. Loose your people, set your people free, deliver your people from the dark elements of evil, and grant us the victory through your Son. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the glory. To give you all the honor, the praises, and the thanks. For we pray and we ask it. We pray and we ask it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and give him some praise. Go ahead and give him some worship. Go ahead and give him some thanks. Go ahead and give him some glory. Ha. For we are weeping and we are mourning and we are praying and we are supplicating. And we are interceding in Isaiah chapter 6. In Isaiah chapter 6 and the 10th verse, the Bible said, go through, go through the gates. Gathered out the stones, gathered out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. I, I, I learned and I understand from scripture, the book of Jeremiah and Ezekiel covers a great portion also the book of Daniel. A great portions of the Babylonian captivity. How Nebuchadnezzar burned the temple in, in Jerusalem and captured the children of Israel and led them away a captive into Babylon and, and turned them into, uh, into slaves and reign and rule over them and the precious stones, the precious stones. Oh, somebody said precious stones. There were some precious stones in the temple, Minister Odin. Some stones of great value that was in the temple. Uh, some costly stones, some precious stones, uh, some great stones that were in the temple they were burned with fire they were burned when Nebuchadnezzar burned the temple they were burned with fire ah, glory to God but I hear the Holy Ghost ah, sister Nicole I hear the Holy Ghost said ah, burn but not consumed ah, burn but not consumed ah, burn but not burned up ah, burn but not dissolved ah, burn but not dissolved 
destroyed, burned but still carrying great value, burned but still alive, burned but still in purpose, burned but still in service, burned but still have my calling, burned but still have my anointing, burned but still have my oil, burned but still have my promise, burned but still a revelation is upon me and in my life. I burn, but I'm still alive. Oh, that's somebody who has been burned in the temple. But you know that you know that you know that you are still alive. And you are still carrying purpose. You are still precious. A stone in the house that you will go ahead and worship him. And go ahead and magnify him. And go ahead and glorify and honor and exalt him. I burn, but not consumed, I burn but not destroy, burn but not burnt up, burn but still have a testimony, burn but still have a praise, burn but still have a song, burn but still on my journey, I burn but still pressing on, the upward way, still gaining new heights, every day, burn but still have a song, in the night season, and all that day long I burn in the temple I'm talking to stones that has been burned in the temple the Bible said when Nebuchadnezzar burned the temple in Jerusalem, the precious stones, the great stone, the costly stones, they were burned in the temple. But God told his prophet to go through the gates, enter the gates. We are talking about the prophetic door. A door is an entrance. A door is a gate. A door lets you in or a door lets you out. A door can free you or a door can bound you. A door can loose you a door can set you free or a door can put you in bondage or in confinement. A door can hide you or a door can expose you. Oh, we are talking about God said I set before you an open door. So God told his prophets, walk through the door, enter through the door, go back in the temple, go back in the temple, re-enter the temple. I still have some stones in the temple. Oh, glory to God. We might have been burned by coronavirus and burned by Delta virus and many families I might have lost how many loved ones and hearts are still broken and spirit wounded and countenance sudden. As a matter of fact, I believe that every family has been touched by coronavirus or Delta virus one way or another. How many have been burned? How many have been destroyed? How many have been wounded by Delta virus? Ah, by coronavirus I burned in the house I burned but God said I set before you an open gate an open door I go through, go through I go through the door walk through the door gather up the stones I gather out the stones get the stones out of the rubbish get the stones out of the garbage get the stones out of the ashes. I clean up the stone. I'm ready to put the stone back in service. I'm ready to put the stones back in use. I am ready to reactivate. I am ready to rebuild. I am ready. Yeah. <laughs> to restore my house, my temple, my stones, my people, I am ready to restore and to return to normal function. 
the stones still carry great value. The Bible said when Job's wife looked upon him, when she looked upon him, she felt within herself that his value has diminished or his value has been depreciated or dissolved and that he was no longer carrying the same value because she was looking at what was happening on the outside. She was not discerning what was happening on the inside. But the apostle John said, Hey, somebody come with me. Though the outward man perish, though the outward man perish, though the outward man is afflicted, though the outward man is getting wrinkled and gray, though the outward man is getting weak, although the outward man is losing shape and beauty, but the inward man, the inward man is renewed day by day. God has to break down the outer man so that the inner man would leave. God has to allow the outer man to dissolve so that the inner man could leave. So when Job's body was been broken down by sores and afflictions, oh, his wife did not interpret and understand that God was doing a greater work on the inside of Job. I stop by to say to somebody today, if your affliction, Reverend Jenny's, if your affliction are being increased, if your afflictions are being multiplied, if your afflictions are being many, for the psalm is said in the 34th psalm, and the 19th verse, many are the afflictions of the righteous. If I can bring to attention to somebody today, it is not because you are not righteous why you are afflicted. That was what Job friends said, that it is because of your sin why you were afflicted. But I want somebody to know today, that you are not being afflicted because of your sin, but you are being afflicted because of your righteousness, because of your holiness, because of the oil that you are carrying, because of the glory that you are carrying, because of the power that you are carrying. You are being afflicted, you are being threatened. Oh, but I stop by to say to somebody today that God said, He will deliver the righteous. Out of them all, out of them all, out of them all. After a while, after a while, after a while, Job came forth with a blessed he, blessed he, blessed he. And as we fast and as we pray and as we seek the face of the Lord today, we are believing that we are going to come out with a uh, with a blessed he, with a blessed he. I believe that we are going to overcome with a blessed said he. I believe we are going to triumph and conquer with the blessed he be the name. Blessed he be the name of the Lord. The reason why the temple the reason why the temple was burnt was because Israel was in a backsliding state. Israel was in a backsliding condition. And when man turned away from God, man lost the favor, man lost the favor. When we turn from the righteousness and the holiness of God, we turn from the favor, we turn from the goodness, and we turn from the mercy. And we turn towards the judgment, we turn towards the wrath, and we turn towards the anger. When God created man, God created man under his mercy side. God placed man under his mercy side. God placed man under his goodness side. 
God placed man under his blessing side. God have a blessing side and God have a curse side. And God told Adam and Eve, whatever you do, don't cross the line. Don't go over there. For over there is the curse side. But over here is the blessing side. Whatever you do, make sure you stay on the blessing side. The first letter in the Bible was in, was in, was in. The Bible said in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning God started with us. In the beginning God created. In the beginning God was present. In the beginning God was there. But the Bible, the Bible said the earth was without form. The earth was without form. And the earth was a void. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. If I can get somebody to understand today that coronavirus and delta virus and COVID-19 might have voided some things in our lives, some things in our ministry. Oh, might have changed some things and moved some things out of shape and out of form. Might have covered us with darkness. Might have brought darkness upon us. Ah, but I want somebody to understand that when it was, ah, when it was void, ah, when it was dark, oh, glory to God. When it was without form, the spirit of the Lord moved. If I can get somebody eh, and radio land and somebody and television and somebody and social media and somebody in the house to come to terms and to understand that it may be dark where you are today. It may be void where you are today. It may be chaos where you are today. Oh, but I stop by to say to you that the darkness could not stop the spirit from moving. The face of the deep could not stop the spirit from moving. The chaos could not stop the spirit from moving. The Bible, the Bible said in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the darkness, upon the face of the deep and the earth, the elements and the firmament, the spirit of God move. Oh, that somebody will shout hallelujah. Where I see a move. I see a move is coming your way. I see a move is heading in your direction. Right where it is dark. Right where it is void. Right where chaos is happening. Oh, right where it has lost shape and form. I see, I see. I see the spirit moving. I see the spirit coming. Why did the spirit lead me there? The spirit leads me there. Because COVID-19 has brought darkness. Darkness upon us. Darkness upon our country. Darkness upon nations. It may not be dark where you are, but I can tell you. There are many places it's very dark. And many people, it's very dark. I have some friends in South Africa. And when I talked to them, they told me it's very dark there financially. It's very dark there. They are, they are struggling. They are suffering. They are going through hardship and famine. Uh, many countries in the world, it's very dark. They are suffering. They have been afflicted. Uh, they are feeling the pangs of COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 has brought darkness up upon the earth and darkness upon man. But thanks be to God today that we serve a God with a moving spirit. With a moving spirit. And that's the reason why we are in fasting today. That's the reason why we are in prayer today. That in the midst of the darkness of COVID-19 that the spirit of God will move and free his people. That the spirit of God will 
will move and deliver his people. That the Spirit of God will move and have mercy upon his people. That the Spirit of God will move and help his people. That the Spirit of God will move and spare his people. But the Bible said when the spirit move, when the spirit move, the spirit creates a separation. The spirit creates a separation. We are fasting and we are praying today that God would separate us from COVID-19. As we read in the scripture that God said, I will send another an army. I think it's a 20th verse that God said, I will send the northern army far away, far away from you. I will drive the stink far away from you. You. I will separate you from the northern army. I will separate you from the stink. I will separate you from this deadly virus. I will separate Galabusha. I will drive away COVID-19 and I will return and restore you and to normal function. But the earth was without form. And it was void. It was void. It was void. When something is voided, it has no value. When something is voided, it is of no use. It is of no purpose. It is of no benefit. It was void. It was void. It has no substance. It has no virtue. It has no power. It has no authority. It was a void. It was void. And it was without a form. But the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, the creative spirit the creative spirit the miracle working spirit the life changing spirit the soul saving spirit the restoring spirit the recovering spirit the turning around spirit the spirit that creates today has showed up in the house as much as we have presented ourselves before God today the spirit has showed up to create and to recreate uh, to change and to transform, uh, to restore and to give victory, uh, to create where there is nothing existing, create where there is nothing happening, uh, create where it is dark and hopeless, uh, create where it is, seems impossible, uh, create where nothing is coming through. Oh God said I've come down uh, today to recreate uh, to the cry and the petitions of my people. So the spirit move, the spirit move, and the spirit move out void, the spirit move out void. <laughs> And the spirit moved, and the spirit moved out uh, that which was out of shape and out of order, that which had no form. The spirit moved and moved that out. And the spirit moved and moved out the darkness, the darkness, the darkness. The spirit moved and moved out the darkness. The spirit moved and separated the waters from the waters. And the water he called the sea and the dry land he called the earth he separated the waters from the waters but the waters has covered the land the waters has covered the land the land was there but the land was underwater oh that somebody whose land is underwater whose land has been covered with floods of water you will come to terms and understand Stand, that today God is removing the water from off your land. Oh, that your land is surfacing and your land is coming forth. And your land is in divine manifestation. And you will be in possession and ownership of your land. And the spirit is moving and removing the floods of water from off your land. And you will live in houses that you never build. You will own business that you never buy and you never Oh, you will learn in 
institutions. Oh, you will earn and you will win. Ah, triumphantly because God is removing the waters. He divided the waters from the waters. And he put the water one side. And the Bible said he set a bound. He set a bound and he told the water. He told the water. No longer can you pass this bound. No longer can you come beyond this bound. Because I have separated you from the inheritance and the portion of my people. Oh, that somebody would understand that when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, he set a bound, he established a bloodline. I said he set a bound and he established a bloodline. And he told demons and devils that those who carry the blood, you cannot cross over. And those who carry the blood, you cannot mess with them. If you mess with them, open fire awaits you. If you mess with them, my judgment awaits you. I did not Jesus said it had been better. A millstone be hung about the neck of the wicked and they be cast into the deepest part of the seas than for them to mess with one of these my children. They are set a bound and if you cross the bound and mess with them wildfire a judgment a destruction will be upon, will be upon, will be upon but there's a war established. There's a war calabosha. There's a war Establish uh, to those who are messing uh, and those who are uh, uh, and those who are afflicted. God said it would have been better for a millstone to be hung about their neck uh, and they'd be thrown overboard in the deepest part of the sea. For that judgment, that judgment in the deepest part of the sea. Jesus said it would have been a lesser judgment than the judgment that will come upon them if they stay on the land. Those who mess, those who mess, those who mess with the righteous, those who mess with God's people, those who mess with the house, those who accept employment to work with Satan and to work for Satan, to mess with the house and to mess with God's people. God said it would have been better to establish a line, a dividing line, a separation line. And those who cross the line will be met with wild fire. So the waters were divided from the waters. And God called the land, the dry ground land and the sea, the water he called sea. But that's not all that happened. The Bible said the light was driven away and light appeared. And light appeared. For the spirit moved in light. The spirit moves in light. For the people that sat in darkness. Uh, have now seen a great light uh, but the spirit move in light uh, and no longer uh, will we be uh, as slaves to fear uh, no longer will we be covered in darkness uh, no longer uh, will the darkness of COVID-19 uh, uh, reign over us uh, uh, we have repented and we have prayed uh, and we have apologized and we have turned uh, and we have worshipped and we have made God happy and God is ready to move and remove the plague and remove the plague and remove the plague of us. The prophet, the prophet Joel, the prophet Joel, his primary focus and theme in Joel chapter 2 was repentance and sanctification. <laughs> repentance and sanctification. <laughs> if I should close this message today without telling somebody <laughs> that God is requiring more than fasting and prayer. 
God is asking for more than fasting and prayer. It's good that we fast for a whole day. And this fasting is going to be for three days. And it's good that we fast for the three days. Or we fast for seven days or 21 days or 40 days or as many days as we want to fast and pray. God is asking for more than fasting and prayer. Oh, the primary, primary focus of the prophet Joel, one of the minor prophets in the Bible, Joel's focus was upon repentance and sanctification. Repentance and sanctification. I say to the church and I say to nations, if we spend three days in fasting and prayer, but if we did not repent and turn and sanctify ourselves and cleanse ourselves and leave the Babylonian things alone, our fasting and our prayer will be but in vain and COVID-19 will continue to haunt us. God is looking for more than fasting and prayer. God is looking for repentance. God is looking for Santi Calabo Shack on the rubber. God is looking for a people who will sanctify, who will consecrate, who will purify themselves. And there was a church. There was a church in Thyatira. There was a church in Philadelphia. And there was a church in, 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 in Sardis. And there was a church all over that was in fasting and was in prayer. But God said, I have something against you. You are fasting and you are praying. But I have something against you. You are rending your garment. You are putting on sackcloth. You are coming before me covered in ashes. But I have something against you. Israel was in fasting. I need somebody to get it. Israel was in fasting. Israel had on the sackcloth. Israel had on the garment. Israel had on the ashes. Israel was at the altar. Israel was fasting. They were praying. But they were still messed up. They were still filthy. They were still dabbling. They were still in ungodly relationships. They were still polluted. They were still unclean. God said, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. God said, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, sanctify yourself, cleanse yourself, wash yourself, purge yourself, take off your sackcloth, take off your ashes. Take off your pretense. Take off your hypocrisy. Take off your evil. Take off your wicked ways. Take off your conspiracy. Take off your undermining, demising spirit. God said, wake up, get up, and take it off. God. Get to your heart. Get to your heart. That's what Joel said. I think it was verse 13 somewhere there. Or verse 14. Where he said, get to your heart. Rend your heart. Rend your heart. You ever hear that scripture that folks put in the Bible? That is not there. That said, render your heart. Anybody hear that scripture? That folks said the Bible said, render your heart and not your garment. That's not what the scripture said. That is not what the Bible said. The Bible said, rend your heart. Rend your heart, not render. 
rend your heart and not your garment. Which God was saying to Israel, rip the evil out of your heart. Rip the wickedness out of your heart. Rip the devil from hell out of your heart. Rip him out of your life. Rip fornication and adultery out of your heart. Rip homosexuality and lesbianism. Rip malice and anger and backbiting and hatred. And carry go bring come and news carrying and undermining and sabotaging. Rip it out Rakata rip alabosha rip it out rend it out of your heart take the focus of the garment and place it upon the heart but the problem is in the heart bitterness is in the heart evil is in the heart corruption is in the heart wickedness is in the heart rend it out rip it out clean it out pray it out fast it out But we have the suit, and we have the dress, and we have the wave, and we have the shout, and we have the hallelujah, and we have the tongues. Oh, we have the fame, and we have the power. Ah, but there are some things in the heart. There are some things in the heart. There are some things in the heart. And the Bible said, the heart, the heart, the heart. The heart is desperately wicked, and who can know it? The heart, the heart. We are having a heart problem. We need to see the heart specialist. We need to render some things out of our heart so that God can take coronavirus of us and set us free. The problem is the heart. We wear the ashes. For the ashes. The ashes is a sign of mourning. Under the ceremonial law, there's a period that is called Lent. The period of Lent really means that Israel is in a 40-day period of mourning. That's what it means. That they are in a 40-day period of mourning. Some churches would have fast during Lent for 40 days because they understand that Lent is a period in which Israel is in mourning. That is why we have Ash Wednesday. That is why they put on ashes and Ash Wednesday because it is the beginning of the mourning period. It is the beginning of the fasting period. It is the beginning of the crying out period before God. And when the Bible said, in St. Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's one of the scriptures that is widely, widely misinterpreted, widely misquoted, widely misused. For that scripture was not talking about when you lose a loved one or a friend. The scripture was not talking about when something happened to you. Jesus was speaking specifically about a period of fasting. A period when man would have come before God to rend their heart. To mourn before God to repent. But the word, the word mourn means to be in repentance. An apology before God. A crying because I'm sorry. I offend you. I'm sorry. I hurt you. I'm sorry.
sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, oh, did, do you hear me? I said, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me, please? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've hurt you. I'm sorry that I've offended you. I'm sorry that I've upset you. Uh, can you forgive me, please? Tears are running down to show how sorry you are. Blessed are they that mourn. Before God in apologies and repentance. Telling him how sorry we are. For that which we have done, how we have disgraced him, how we have shamed him, how we have let him down, how we have disappointed him. God, we are mourning and asking you to have mercy and to free us. Coronavirus, COVID-19 has taken comfort, has taken comfort away from us. Let's tell the truth, coronavirus has left us confused and messed up. Let's tell the truth, coronavirus has turned scientists into non-scientists and have turned non-scientists into scientists for folks who have never been to school and never study uh, anything named science and don't even know what the word mean don't even understand what the word mean all of a sudden they turn time scientists that they can give you directions and give you instructions and give you advice about the vaccine what the vaccine can do and what it cannot do and why you should take it and why you should not take it the non-scientists our coronavirus has given them more power and folks are believing in the non-scientists more than the scientists. That's what coronavirus has done to us. The Bible tells us in Numbers, I believe it's Numbers 21, if I'm not mistaken, that the children of Israel, they were traveling through the wilderness and as they were traveling through the wilderness, they would have sinned and they were messed up. They were dabbling. They were messed up. And I want the church to understand. And I want the church to know that God said, God said, do you know, do you know, do you know why coronavirus come upon us and is in the church and us? Because God said in 1 Peter chapter 4 that judgment begin at the house of the Lord first. If the corruption is in the house, the house cannot accept the judgment. If the evil is in the house, if iniquity is in the heart of the people, the house cannot escape the judgment. But God said the judgment begin at the house first. So the church was shut first. For God said the judgment begins at the house first. The house will not escape if the house is a part of the corruptions and the pollutions and a part of the cause. So the church needs to repent. And the church need to turn. I believe it's in Hosea. I believe it's Hosea chapter 10. And the 12 verse said. Break up your fallow ground. Uh oh. When I was a boy growing up. I would have heard some preachers say the Bible said to break up your folly ground. But when I read the Bible, I said, Lord, have mercy. The Bible did not say anything about folly ground. The Bible said, break up your fallow ground. 
the ground you are walking on, the ground you are following on, the ground you are treading on. You are on holy ground. You need to break up your ground and come to holy ground. Where break up your fellow ground and sow no more among thorns. I seek the Lord, repent until he come from heaven and have mercy upon you. Ground breaking up time. Ground sanctifying time, ground purifying time, ground consecrating time, oh, ground repentance time. The Bible, the Bible said, when Israel would have sinned, they were dying without numbers. They were dying without numbers, like folks were dying. With COVID-19 without numbers. Until the vaccine came along. And slowed down and slowed down. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if we did not have vaccine now? When Delta landed? Can you imagine? When Delta landed? If we did not have vaccine. Can you imagine? The chaos that we would have been in today if we did not have vaccine. So God told Moses, get a brazen serpent. Set it up on a pole in the wilderness. Tell my people, if you look up on the pole when you are bitten, when you are stung by the snake, if you look up on the pole, you will not die. You will not die, but you will live. And folks right there in the presence of the pole and the presence of the snake, they die by the bitten and die, bitten and die, bitten and die, refusing to look up. God told us to cover ourselves. God told us to cover ourselves. I was one of the first ones to take the vaccine because I learned and I understand that, uh, that, that the vaccine serves as a covering. And it is proven scientifically that the vaccine uh, uh, work as a covering against the virus. But as many folks refuse to look up, many folks refuse to take, and as many folks refuse to take, and many folks are dying and getting sick because God said, I provided you covering. I provided you help. But God said, I cannot put the covering on you. God said, I, I give you armor. I give you armor. And God said, put on the whole armor. God said, I cannot put it on. You got to put it on. I provide it, but you got to put it on. You got to use it for yourself. Ah, say it, God. Say it, God. Say it, God. But Corona, COVID, COVID has turned many non-scientists into scientists and folks are listening to the non-scientists and their garbage and their foolish and their ignorance and folks are falling prey and folks are dying with them and dying by the numbers with them but let me say to the church and let me say to God's people one of the things that God cannot bless is ignorance hello God cannot bless ignorance. We want to be ignorant. God cannot bless that. We want to be ignorant. God cannot help us with that. What God can help us with is when we put on the armor. When we use that which he has provided, that which he has given us. That which his hands has provided. The Bible said wisdom comes from God. Knowledge uh, comes from God. It is God who gives man knowledge. It is God who gives man wisdom. And God is saying, I am providing an open door. I'm providing a way out. An open door is a way out. 
doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The vaccine is good. It doesn't matter. How much vaccine we will take. God said, I am not going to remove the plague. I am not going to remove the plague. And now I am wondering. Now I am wondering, Pastor Colin, if what has happened down in Egypt is now happening to our nations. Has God, Mother Colin, hardened the heart of Pharaoh? I am wondering if God is hardening some folks' heart so that the virus would continue. I am wondering if the hearts of some folks have been hardened for them not to take the vaccine so the, vi so, so, so the virus, so the judgment, so the penalty of God could continue upon the land. I, 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 I am not saying the Bible say that. I'm saying I'm wondering if that's what God is doing. Uh, 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 because it doesn't matter how much vaccine we are going to come up with. It doesn't matter how many days we are going to spend in fasting and prayer until we repent. Until we sanctify we cannot use vaccine to replace repentance. <laughs> oh, get it, get it, get it, get it right. Now the vaccine is serving its place. And the vaccine is helping. But we cannot use vaccine to replace repentance. For the people in nowadays are trying to use a tower. They try to build their way out of the judgment of God. To build their way away from the judgment of God. By building a tower to climb their way away from the judgment of God. But the tower. The tower of Babel could not have stopped the judgment and the wrath of God. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what we will try or what we will do. God is saying in his words today, what I am looking for, I'm looking for my ministers and my priests. I am looking, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of his closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spear thy people O Lord. Ah, give not thy heritage to report to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people we are is, where is, uh, where is thy God? Blessed are they that mourn. Let the ministers mourn. Let the priests mourn. Let they cry. Let they repent. Let they lead the people in repentance. Let them lead the people in apologies. Let them lead the people uh, into the presence, into the righteousness, and into the holiness of God. As I close today, let the ministers, let the priests, let sanctification start in the pulpit. Let sanctification start with lead Leadership. Let sanctification start uh, in the house. Let sanctification start in our lives. Let sanctification, for that which is coming from the pulpit must be sanctified and it must be holy. And that which is coming from the altar must be sanctified and it must be holy. Oh, somebody, somebody, somebody. Uh, it's morning time. It's morning time. It's weeping time. It's crying time. For the Bible said, Blessed are they that mourn. For the God said, I will return you the comforter. I will return return you my spirit. I will return you my presence. And those who will repent and apologize, those who will mourn and turn, I will send you the comforter. That's what the Bible said. The mourners will receive the comforters. Oh, if every time we need the comforter, it is now. So if every time we need to mourn, if every time we need to cry before God, if every time we need to repent before God, if every time we need to rend our hearts before God, it is now it is now it is now that the blessing will return the favor will return all the blessing that we have lost will return the curse will live a blessed it is our mourning it's our repentance that is going to restore the blessing and bring back the blessing into the house into the house into the house into the house into the house. Sister Akima, stand where you are. 
Stand where you are. I release a birthday blessing upon you today. I release a birthday blessing upon you today. And I launch you. I launch you. Stretch your hands towards her. I launch you in the orbit of the spirit. I launch you in the orbit of the resurrection power. I launch you in the orbit of the Holy Ghost. I launch you in the orbit of the favor of God. I launch your feet that your feet will be beautiful upon the mountains. Oh, that your feet will be swift and beautiful when they dance. For the Bible said, How beautiful are the feet of those that bring good tidings of good. How beautiful are the feet of those that are upon the mountains. I release your feet and I launch your ministry into the orbit of the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus that you will mount up with wings. Say. And this saturation day, I saturate you with the anointing. I saturate you with the power of the Holy Ghost. I saturate you in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, to be saturated means to be indwelled. To be saturated means to be unctionized. To be saturated means to be possessed by. Uh, to be unctionized by. Uh, to be filled up by. That's why this day is called a day of saturation. Because we are filling up the earth. We are filling up the elements. We are filling up uh, uh, the heavens with repentance and apologies. Uh, and fasting and prayer. Uh, and turning and turning and turning. Uh, you may be seated. I say to the church today. What God is looking for is more than fasting and prayer. God is looking for a turn, a turn, a turn, a turn, a turn, a turn, a turn. If somebody will find Second Chronicles 7 and the 13th verse and read it. And then we are going to close. We are going to close. We are going to close. The fasting continues until 6 p.m. this evening. Get on Facebook or get on YouTube or get on Instagram. You will see the different speakers. You will see the different speakers. People will be. Second Chronicles 7, 13. 13. Second Chronicles 7, verse 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. And if I command the locusts, you know many folks said it's not God who sent the virus and God has nothing to do with the virus because folks want to still find a way out and to say, well, they can make themselves comfortable and make themselves happy in spite of what is going on. But God said, if I shut up the heaven and if I send pestilence and the locusts and what else? Or if I send pestilence among my people. If I send pestilence among my people. If my people who are if called. If my people. Who are called by my name. If I send pestilence among my people. If I send plagues among my people. If I shut up the heavens and cut off blessings. And release famine and destructions upon man. If my people who are called by my name. Will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face. I said God is looking for more than fasting and prayer. God said my people need to turn. From their wicked ways. From their wicked ways and seek my face. Then. Then will I hear from, from heaven, heaven. And will forgive their sin. I will forgive their sins and, and I will heal their, their lands. Now mine eyes and my ears are open to listen. And I will return them to normal functions. Mm -hmm. With a repentance and a turning. A repentance and a turning. I have bad news. Bad news. Bad news. We are spending a whole day in fasting. And we are going to fast some more. But if our nations refuse to repent and turn, the pandemic will only get worse. 
the pandemic will only get worse. Fasting and prayer alone cannot stop the pandemic. It requires a turning. Yes. It requires a sanctification, a consecration, and a purification. Do you know what kept Israel in the wilderness for 40 years? Do you know what? You know why Israel stayed in the wilderness for 40 years? Because they were unsanctified and they were unholy. And God told Joshua what the problem was. And the day when God told Joshua what the problem was. And the day when Joshua addressed the problem. Israel exit themselves out of the wilderness. For God told Joshua to get the people together. Gather the people together. And tell them to sanctify themselves. Or in three days, if they sanctify themselves, they will cross over this Jordan. The stopping of the plague is with a condition. And the condition is that man will turn and repent and apologize and seek the face of God. And God will have mercy. Brother Daly, Brother Daly. The couple beside you, the, the lady in the red dress, yes, yes. Can you stand, please, ma'am? Uh, and the gentleman, too. Can you stand, please? Can you stand, please? I, 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 I hear the Holy Ghost. I hear the Holy Ghost say there's a thing that is called cycle. There's a thing that is called cycle. I'm not talking about bicycle. But there's a thing that is called cycle. Cycle. Winter is a cycle. Spring is a cycle. Summer is a cycle. Autumn is a cycle. A cycle is something that repeats itself over and over and over. A cycle is a thing that stays with you. A cycle is a thing that there are times it seems as if you get rid of it. But it's coming right back. It's coming right back. It's called a cycle. I am seeing a cycle. I am seeing a cycle. And the cycle that I'm seeing, it has been sent. It has been sent. It has been paid for. It has been hired to create havoc in your family, to create havoc in your home. But today I stand on the anointing and I stand under the power of the Holy Ghost and open wildfire upon the cycle, upon the cycle upon the cycle, upon the generational curse upon the ancestor spirit upon the house of bondage upon the demonic assignment I open fire and everything that has been buried up I dig up, I dig up, I dig up, I dig up I blood up, I loose and I release, I release I release your garment, I release your garment your garment that has been buried, I release it I dig it up, I dig it up, I release it. I blood up the ground, I blood up the spot. I blood up the place, I loose. I reckon the labo shock on the rubber. I interrupt the plot. I disrupt the plot. I curse the plot. I liberate and loose. Release. And set you free that you will inherit you will inherit the years the year the Holy Ghost said the years that the canker worms and the palmer worms and the locusts and the caterpillar has eaten God said he's bringing back those years. He's restoring. I call back those years. That in old age, in old age, you will reap those years. In old age, you will flourish in those years. In old age, things will be easy in those days. Because God said, I'm bringing back and I'm restoring the years. At the Kalabosha by your house. I release it, I release it, I release it in Jesus' name. Sister Georgia, stand where you are. Stand where you are. Put your hand on your stomach. Put your hand on your stomach. I stand to represent Jesus, the healer, the Messiah, the redeemer, and the deliverer. For he has sent me to represent him. He said, greater works shall we do than even that which he did while he was here on earth. I rebuke every spirit of complication. 
I rebuke every assignment of complication. I blood every spirit of witchcraft and black magic. I blood every arrow that has been released and directed towards your child. I blood it and confound it. I defeat it. I destroy it. I open wild fire upon it. I wrap your child. Oh, in the hands of the angels of God, I surround you. I deliver you from all evil. I deny every evil petition. And I blood up every evil plot. And I cover you for safe delivery. By and through the anointing and by and through the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. That young lady, that young lady behind brother devil, that young lady, yes, yes, you, 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 yes, yes, you stand up. You stand up, you stand up. I hear, I hear. I hear the Holy Ghost said, when the day is dark before you, and the clouds are hanging low, I'm seeing some low clouds, I'm seeing some low clouds. I'm seeing some low clouds, and the clouds, the low clouds that I'm seeing, they are as a result of low blows. They are as a result of low blows. But I hear the Holy Ghost said, when the day is dark before you, and the clouds are hanging low, and you're feeling the pain of the low blows in your belly, there's one who watches over you, wherever you may go. And Jesus is the one, yes, he's the only one. And I hear him say you may not be able to walk on the waters or climb the mountains but I know a man who can and today the man who can is fixing it for you the man who can is climbing it for you the man who can is walking on the waters for you the man who can is lifting the clouds and the burden is healing the hurt is liberating and Setting a labo shack on the rubber. I hear the Holy Ghost said, Your bedroom will never be a prison. Your bedroom will never be a prison. You will never be a prisoner in your bedroom for I loose you and I set you free. So when you sleep in your bed or in your bedroom you will never feel anymore like you are a prisoner. Stretch your hands over there. Stretch your hands over there. Stretch your hands over there. Every spirit of suffocation I see a spirit of suffocation. A spirit want to suffocate you. A spirit want to, to suffocate you. I see an assignment and I see a spirit of suffocation. But I open fire. Wild fire upon that spirit. Wild fire upon that demon. Wild fire upon that assignment. Wild fire upon that devil. Wild fire upon the witch that send the spirit. Wild fire upon their network and their operation. I deliver you from the spirit of suffocation. Suffocate in your marital glory. Suffocate in your future. Suffocate in your blessings. Suffocate in your promotion. But today I open wild fire. I alabo shaba. I open wild fire. But every suffocating demon and I lose you. I lose you. I lose you. And I set you free today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brother Neville, stand where you are. Stand where you are. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. God has anointed me. God has anointed me to change a cycle. God has anointed me to change a cycle. 
And I declare over your life today. I declare over your life today. As much as you're a child of a praying woman. As much as you're the child of a praying woman. And God said he will never see the side of the seed of the righteous forsaken. Uh, today I release. I release over your life. The end of every cycle. The end of every cycle. That has been assigned to mess with your mind. To mess with your marital glory. To mess with your inheritance. To mess with your future. I release the ekata, the wildfire of God, and blood of the assignment, and then they recycle and rejoice, release joy and happiness in your life. That from this day forward, you will be happy. Said the Lord God Jehovah, by we ikalabosha, we interrupt the cycle, we blood up the cycle, we curse the cycle, we end the cycle, we set fire upon the cycle. And the Holy Ghost said, You shall eat and be satisfied. And you shall eat in plenty. For God said the seed of the righteous shall be mighty upon the earth. And wealth and riches, I prophesy in your life. The 112 Psalms said wealth and riches shall be in the house of the righteous. And I hear the Spirit said wealth and riches will come your way and be your portion. And I hear the Holy Ghost said in Deuteronomy chapter 8 that God is a God that giveth power to get wealth, to get wealth, to get wealth. And God said I've given you the power. Go ahead and use the power. That I've given you and I will be with you. I will be with you. I interrupt the plot. I disrupt the plot. I blood up the plot. I release victory unto you. We got to close. We got to close. It's a day that we set aside to seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. There's a thing, there's a thing that is called a special favor. There's a thing that is called a special favor. And favor is a thing, favor is a thing that handed down, that handed down. And the Bible said, because Solomon, Solomon, you know, Solomon was the son of Bathsheba. She was, he was the son of Bathsheba. Bathsheba was Uriah's wife that David took, that killed Uriah and took his wife and married him. And, and Bathsheba was the mother of, 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 of Samuel, Sa Solomon. And I remember, Sister Sherry, Sister Sherry, I preached a message some years ago, uh, uh, the, the, the son of the stolen wife. That was the title of this, the, the sermon. The son of the stolen wife. But because David, because David, because God said David was a man after his own heart. Uh, the favor of David, in spite of what might have happened, in spite of how complication the situation may be, oh, God said David was a man after my own heart. And the favor of David has swallowed up Solomon. He became the wisest and the richest among David's children in spite of his birth and the circumstances. And I hear the Holy Ghost say the favor of your father has swallowed you up. The favor of your father oh, has located you. And today I activate and release that favor upon your life and within your life. And I establish and decree and declare to the devil that you are a child of the righteous. You are a child of the righteous. And the child of the righteous, the Bible said, shall be blessed. Hear me and hear me well. You are not just another young lady down the street. 
You are not just another woman. <laughs> ah, you're a called woman, an anointed woman, a blessed woman, a sought out woman, a woman who is the son of the righteous, the daughter of the righteous. Second Corinthians 11. I hear the Apostle Paul said, That which I have received of the Lord, I have delivered unto you. And I'm saying today, that which I've received of the Lord, under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost, I release it unto you, unto you, that your ministry will reach nations, and your ministry will touch lives. And your ministry will save souls. And God will open doors. And God will bless. And God will increase. And God will elevate. And God will give victory by the anointing. I release it. I hear the song come back when the day is dark before you. Maybe we should sing that. Maybe we should sing it. Maybe we should sing it. I believe it's 273 in the church hymnal. Maybe we should sing it when the day is dark before you. And the clouds are hanging low because somebody in the house today, somebody's in the house today and your day is dark and the clouds are hanging low. But the Lord wants you to know that there's one who watches for you. Wherever, wherever, wherever. 